Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be adding powers of i. Actually not powers of i but the reciprocals of powers of i. And I'll be presenting at least two methods. Let's see how that goes. So we have this sum 1 over i plus 1 over i squared plus 1 over i cubed dot 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 all the way up to 1 over i to the 40th power. So let's see how we can add this in different ways. First of all, I'm thinking about simplifying each of these terms. So what is 1 over i, right? Let's go ahead and take a look. So 1 over i is basically the reciprocal of a complex or imaginary expression or just imaginary unit. And I can basically multiply by the conjugates. What is the conjugate for i? That will be if you said i, that's wrong, it's supposed to be negative i. But a lot of times people are going to multiply by i, then, then they'll continue with the negative sign. But I like to multiply this by negative i. That gives me negative i over negative i squared. But i squared is negative 1, so negative i squared is positive 1. Therefore, this is negative i. So, in other words, the reciprocal of i is negative i, which is also its conjugate. So, I kind of satisfies the conjugate of i is the reciprocal of, or the conjugate of a complex number z is the reciprocal. So i is the number that satisfies this equation. As you know, when you multiply these two things, you're going to get the absolute value squared. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other terms. How do you simplify 1 over i squared? 1 over i squared is just going to be 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1, because i squared is negative 1. 1 over i cubed, since i cubed is negative i, this is going to become negative 1 over i. 1 over i was negative i, so this is going to be positive i. And then what happens with 1 over i to the fourth power? That's just going to become 1 over 1, because i to the fourth, remember, we're working mod 4 here, so it's going to be 1, so this is also going to be 1. So what happens with powers of i? Well, they alternate, and they kind of repeat over and over, right? Periodically. Same thing happens with the reciprocals, because reciprocals of powers of i are also powers of i, and just in a different way. Think about what would happen when you have 1 over i to the power n, right? What would you multiply by to get this um, as a power of i? That would be a good question, because it really depends on what n is, right? Of course, n is an integer in this case. We're not talking about fractions or any other crazy stuff, like what is i to the power 3 fourths or i to the power root 2. Those are kind of crazy things. We're going to keep it simple. Anyway, so those are the terms. And since this is going to repeat, is it? Let's go ahead and take a look at 1 over i to the fifth power, which is the same as 1 over i. So notice that the same rule applies 1 over i to the power 4n, minus, uh, 4n plus k is basically the same as 1 over i to the power k, which is great because n and k are integers, so this works. Now, so let's go ahead and see how many terms we have. So all it comes down to is basically how many terms do you have because a lot of things are going to cancel out and you kind of need to know what's going to be left over. So we have from i to the first to i to the 40th. So that means there's going to be 40 terms because we don't have i to the power 0. We don't have 1. We could have, I guess, but I don't know why I didn't include it. I just start, wanted to start at 1 over i. But there is a number of terms is basically a multiple of 4. What's that supposed to mean? Well, every four terms, every four consecutive terms are going to cancel out. So we're going to end up with nothing. Are you serious? Yeah, everything is going to cancel out, even though these are all kind of reciprocals. We're going to end up with zero. So this sum is actually equivalent or equal to zero. Okay? All right. I don't know if you were expecting this, but that's what it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative method for solving this problem. Now, second method. Let's call it second. So 1 over i plus 1 over i squared. Now, what would you do if you had to use another method? Because sometimes your teacher might say, hey, I want you to use this particular method. Sometimes the test or the problem will ask for a certain method to be used. It's just to make sure that, you know, the people or students uh, know how to use that particular method, especially if it's an important one. Anyways, so here's one thing. This is a geometric series, a finite geometric series. And what do we know? We can just add 
the terms. So if you have something like a sub 1 plus a sub 1r plus a sub 1r squared, dot, dot, dot. And by the way, instead of a sub 1, you could also write a. It doesn't matter. a sub 1 just represents the first term. And r is the common ratio. So this is equal to, of course, I'm not talking about the uh, what's it called, the uh, infinite case. I'm talking about the finite case, so let's go ahead and end at a1 times r to the power n minus 1. Uh, a lot of times they're going to finish or end this with n minus 1 because we want to get n terms, and we start with r to the power 0. Make sense? So there are n terms. And this sum can actually be kind of simplified as follows. You can take out a sub 1, so you don't have to write it like n times. And then this will look a little simpler. And with a little clever trick, we can basically evaluate the sum. How do you evaluate the sum? Should we talk about it briefly? Because sometimes I skip things and people uh, really, you know, complain about it. And even if you didn't complain about it, I think if you ever say like, okay, can you explain this a little bit more? I'd be more than happy to do it. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So now whenever you have a sum like this, and if it's geometric, uh, we go call it S. S stands for sum. It's the same thing as the integral symbol. That's just an elongated S. That's a different symbol. Well, it's the same thing. Anyways, so now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply everything by R. So if I multiply 1 by R, I'm going to get R, R squared, R cubed, dot, dot, dot. And of course, I'm going to have R to the power N. And of course, it's going to be S multiplied by R. Now, here's the trick. Either way is fine, but I would like to subtract this way. So let's go ahead and subtract these terms. How do you subtract them? You can negate the second one and just add. So that's what, that's, uh, let's do it. Minus sign, minus sign, minus sign. Everything has a minus sign. Everything, including this one, has a minus sign. When you subtract, you're going to notice that everything cancels out diagonally, including r to the power n minus 1. And we end up with 1 minus r to the n equals s minus sr. And then if you take out s, of course, this is provided that this expression will converge. But guess what? This is a finite series, so it will converge, of course. From here, s becomes 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. So that's our sum. Let's go back here. So this expression right here is basically going to be 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. When you multiply by a sub 1, you're going to get the sum. So a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r is our sum. But what is the first term in this series? 1 over i. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So let me go ahead and copy that here so I don't have to scroll back and forth like crazy. So our sum was 1 over i plus 1 over i squared plus dot 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 all the way up to 1 over i to the 40. Now a sub 1 is the first term, it's 1 over i, multiply by 1 minus 1 over i to the power n. Now in this case, n is the number of terms, which is 40, and that will be divided by 1 minus 1 over i. Yes, this expression looks much complicated, but guess what? It works. So it's going to simplify this. This is going to be 1 over i to the 40, but i to the 40 is 1, remember? And that's going to give us 1 minus 1. Are you serious? We got zero already. Yay, we don't even have to do any simplifications. Of course, these are non zero. So our sum is equivalent to zero one more time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye bye.